problem 3.58 from our textbook Mechanical Vibration from Rao 6 edition and we like to analyze the response of an automobile which is motor as a singular bit of freedom system vibrating in a vertical direction. It is driven along a road whose elevation varies sinusoidally. The distance between peak to peak is 0.2 meters and the distance along the road between peaks is 35 meters. Its natural frequency is considered to be 2 Hz and the damping ratio of the chalk absorber is 0 0.50. We like to determine the amplitude of vibration if the automobile is driving at speed of 60 km per hour and we like to also analyze which speed will be the most unfavorable speed for the passenger and I will also calculate the response for that most critical speed. I like to go back to our narrated lecture where we analyze the equations that we will use. The case that we will analyze is the case 2 of harmonic motion analysis which is the moving base. In this slide we show the equations that we will use. The first thing we do is the Fibre diagram, then we add forces in the vertical direction and we get the equation of motion. This is our external force and then we get the response for that harmonic force. We are able to write the response either in terms of the parameters C, K and M or in terms of the damping ratio and the frequency ratio. Here we have the formula sheet. I'm highlighting the case, which is harmonic moving of the base, and we will look at the absolute response. It's a function of the amplitude of motion of the base times the transmittability factor, which is right here. So now, now back to our problem, we have our equation of motion, and that's mx2 dot plus cx dot plus kx equals to the cy dot and ky, y being the displacement of the base, and that is y sub zero, which is the amplitude sine of omega t, and y dot will be y sub zero omega cosine of omega t. And we recall that any sine of cosine and cosine of the same frequency can be written in terms of a single sine function or a cosine function with a phase angle. So with the amplitude will be the square root of the both amplitude square and then we have sine of omega t minus a phase angle. And those are the equations that we already looked at in the presentation. Therefore, we know that the response will be equal to y sub zero tau sine of omega t minus the first phase angle minus another phase angle. And we know that tau is the transmissibility coefficient and is equal to the square root of 1 plus 2 zeta r squared divided by square root of 1 minus r squared or that squared plus 2 zeta r or that square. Now, how do we calculate the response? The function sine goes from minus 1 to 1. So we will analyze the magnitude, which is y sub 0 tau. But we need r and zeta to calculate tau. So let's analyze the information that we are given for the curve. They are telling us from peak to peak, the distance is 0 0.2 meters. Therefore, my amplitude is 0 0.1. And then they are giving me the distance between peak to peak as 35 meters. That will allow me, with the velocity, calculate the period. Let's do that. So we have a velocity of 60 kilometers per hour. And if we want to get that in meters over second, we multiply by 1,000, divide by 3,600, and we get that the velocity is 16.67, or 66 periodic. And we know that the velocity extends over time. 
Therefore, we can solve for time, which will be distance over velocity. The distance is 35 meters, and the velocity is 16.67. So the period for that function is 2.1 seconds. The period allows us to calculate the frequency of that uh, motion. And that frequency will be 2 pi over the period. And that will give me a frequency of 2.99 radians over second. To calculate the frequency ratio, we need the natural frequency, but the natural frequency is given because they tell us that it's 2 hertz. 2 hertz will be 2 times 2 pi radians over second. Therefore, R will be 2.99 divided by 4 pi. R is equal to 0 0.238. And now, we need zeta as well, but zeta is given because they tell us that the shock absorbers are as, have a damping coefficient of 0 0.15. So that is given. Now let's put those values into our transmissibility coefficient. And we get that, let me put in all the values, square root of 1 plus 2 zeta r, all that square. divided by square root of 1 minus r squared. All that square plus 2 zeta r squared. That gives me a value for tau of 1.0598. With tau, I can calculate the amplitude of the response, which is y sub zero tau. Y sub zero is given, that is 0 0.1, and we, well, the one that is given is 0 0.2, so we take half, and that's 0 0.1 times 1.0598. So the amplitude at a velocity of 60 kilometers per hour with a uh, damping coefficient of 0 0.15 and a frequency ratio of 0 0.238 will be 0 0.106. Now we want to calculate the most unfavorable speed. So where are the most critical situation? And for the passenger, it means that the vehicle will move the most, right? So for that, we want to find the critical speed. And the critical speed means a critical value for R, a critical frequency ratio. And that means a maximum value for the, the transmissibility coefficient. So to get that, we can go back to our formula sheet as well because we have to derive the transmissibility coefficient respect to R and equals to zero and then solve for R. Let me go back to the formula sheet and show you that equation. Here we already highlighted that we are working with the harmonic motion and here is the graph. And this is where we are getting the maximum transmissibility coefficient and the critical value for R has this expression. Now let me write it here and that was the square root of 1 plus 8 zeta square minus 1 and the square root of all that divided by 2 zeta. We plug in the value for zeta equals 0 0.5 one five, and the critical value for R is equals to, let me input all these values. So the square root of that minus one, and again the square root divided by two times 0 0.15. 
The critical value for R is 0 0.979. That means that is very close to resonance because the resonance occurs at R equals 1. Now, we don't need the graph to solve the problem, but the graph is a very useful tool to see what is happening. Here I graph the function for the transmissibility factor and the blue line represents it for zeta equals 0 0.15. We already found the value for that tau for r equals 0 0.238 and as you see for the maximum value occurs at 0 0.979 which is right here and this is the value that we call as T day max, the maximum co uh, coefficient of transmissibility. And now, with that value of critical R, we can get the critical frequency, which will be that value of R, which is 0 0.979 times the natural frequency, which was 4 pi, and that gives me a value of critical frequency of 12303 variance over second. Now we do the inverse process, right? With that critical frequency, we can get the critical period, which then will be 2 pi over that critical uh, value for the frequency, and that gives me 0 0.51 seconds. And with that time, I can find the critical velocity which will be distance over time, and we will 35 is the same distance over that now that new time, which is 0 0.51, and that gives me a velocity of 63.5 meters over second. If we multiply that velocity times 3,600 and divided by 1,000, we can write in terms of kilometers per hour. That velocity, critical velocity gives me a value of 246.7 kilometers per hour. I hope nobody drives at that speed. That's a very high speed. But the condition of vibration gets very critical at that speed. We can also calculate the amplitude for that critical speed. And for that, we know that the Amplitude is again by sub zero, which is 0 0.1, times that critical value for the transmissibility factor. So that will be then, let me calculate, let me plug on all the numbers. The zeta is the same value, but we have a different value for R. Which is now 0 0.979 and I plug in the values in the denominator again and I get a value for the maximum transmissibility factor of 3.50 and multiplying that by, by sub zero which is 0 0.1 I get that the maximum amplitude will be 0 0.350 meters and that maximum amplitude is for that critical velocity that we found that is 246 kilometers per hour which meant a critical value of R of 0 0.9 So in this slide, I show the solution for the whole problem. We first found the amplitude for a condition of 60 kilometers per hour, and then a critical value for 246 kilometers per hour.